But as I get my probe and have a little feel around, I notice that this actually is a huge uh, pulp stone. So hello, welcome to uh, this week's uh, Friday clinical case. And um, this is one of those cases where, you know, I do consults, root canal consults all week. And I look at uh, uh, periphical radiographs, pre-op periphical radiographs. And I think, oh, this this might be a nice one for the channel. And, uh, um, you know, when we complete this root canal, it looks great on the post-op. And also there's loads and loads of learning experiences. So I'm really, really happy to showcase um, this, uh, this case today. And of course... The title is the, probably the biggest pulp stone that I've ever moved from a, a tooth before, so that's another exciting thing. Um, but I suppose um, when you've got a, a huge pulp stone, it can eat up your appointment quite significantly, but in this case, I managed to get it out pretty good. But before we get into the case, before I show you the pre-op uh, uh, radiograph, I want to say that over 50% of the people who watch these videos are non-subscribers, so please, if you could, I've got one thing for you to do. It's quick, it's easy, it's simple, and it's free. It's just to hit that subscribe button. If you hit the subscribe button, it pushes the channel along. It also uh, supports the channel. Um, and if you want to support the channel even further, we've got a membership program here on YouTube. The membership program, we've got early access to content, and also we've got exclusive content. So we've got a fantastic endodontic access video on there, and also we've got a part two of our newly qualified dentist uh, survival guide video on there as well. So we'll get into the case. So this is um, a case of an, uh, a low right seven, and um, the patient uh, presented um, with a, uh, this was an external referral. They just had a crown placed on this tooth, and unfortunately, in this case, uh, the tooth became symptomatic. So we got her in for a, a consultation, um, and given the history, it was pretty obvious that this tooth had become uh, necrotic. And when we look at this uh, type of case, especially with lower sevens, you've got to have, um, you've got to keep yourself on your toes with lower sevens mainly because they have a wide variation of anatomy you know so in this case um you know we look at the periblical here and it's got this weird kind of it looks like an accessory canal maybe um it looks like maybe the the two mesials have got a sort of one two one um uh, canal configuration who knows and i suppose you could argue that we could take a, a cone beam CT scan in this case. And, um, you know, when we get a lot of these, uh, uh, when I put these a lot of these uh, posts up, uh, I get a lot of comments saying a cone beam CT scan, cone beam CT scan. I'm um, at the moment feeling like um, I do like to take cone beam CT scans, but in this case, I feel like the first protocol is just to access the tooth and just see what we can see. And I understand that there are cultural um, uh, uh, opinions on whether a cone beam CT scan should be taken or not, um, depending on where you're from. Um, in, in my case, in the UK, I would say maybe five years ago, people didn't like to take cone beam CT scans. And now, uh, moving forward, I, no I noticed that people are more likely to take them. But in this case, I feel like I just wanted to open up the tooth and just see, uh, see what was going on. So if we move over to the video, we're going to obviously place uh, rubber dam and um, I'm going to access the tooth. Um, what I used to do is I used to uh, access crowns with the rubber dam off, but in this case now I'm happy just to place the rubber dam on and, and access through. Um, and as I'm drilling through this crown, um, I feel like kind of that characteristic drop where I've dropped into uh, the canal space. So I'm just going to use a, a, a Endo Z burr. This is a, a burr which has got a blunted end just to open up the, uh, the, the, the canal orifice. And I know that the canal orifices are quite close together, so I'm thinking about maybe I want to uh, uh, keep this prep nice and small but when I open up this tooth I notice that it looks a bit unusual and, and, and maybe this is a c-shaped mole and we get these a lot with uh, lower sevens but as I get my probe and have a little feel around I notice that this actually is a huge uh, pulp stone so at first it looked like the sort of edges of the pulp stone was like a sort of c-shape um, and 
Um, the, 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 the difficulty with doing these, uh, to removing these pulp stones is you've got to think about um, conservative uh, uh, tooth removal. So I obviously could just open up this crown quite significantly and pop this, uh, this, this, this pulp stone out uh, quite easily. But um, I, I'm, I'm acutely aware this is a this is a this is a brand new crown. The tooth it looks a bit narrow, so I want to try and remove as least um, uh, uh, tooth tissue as possible. So in this case, I'm just um, keeping the existing access that I've got. Just have, have a little uh, fiddle around. I notice that um, it's not it's not coming out. So I'm just going to use these low energy ultrasonics to try and. Um, uh, uh, sort of open up the uh, the access cavity ever so slightly, and I'm also using my Yoshi uh, GP removal tool here. So this is like a, a DG Entodontic Pro, which got a little tiny hook on the end, but it's still not um, still not being uh, removed easily. But after a, a lot of fiddling around, a lot of messing around, um, I just ever ever so slightly start to lift this uh, this pulp stone out. And in, and in fact, what I do notice with this pulp stone is that the organic tissue. Um, um, within the pulp, you know, the remain uh, the remnants of the pulp, uh, the, the the pulp itself was probably um, keeping this uh, this pulp stone in. So what I uh, what I was doing is I was obviously irrigating with sodium hypochlorite, and what this was doing is was kind of dissolving the organic tissue, which keeping this in. And um, obviously my nurse is on the edge of a seat at this moment because she's watching this on the main screen. And then when we sort of uh, pulled this uh, this 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 pulp stone out, she was she sort of let out a big sort of. Uh, uh, cry of uh, well done and um and and you know as i hold this with my tweezers to try and sort of get get the get the get the shot here for the uh, for the for the channel um my tweezers i'm holding just a little bit too hard with the tweezer and the the pulp sound kind of kind of kind of flicks away um never to be seen again i'm sure that the, the the nurse found it later on when she was cleaning up but um yeah it's a huge 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 pulp stone massive massive so great so we've got that out We've now um, opened up the, uh, the, the the pulp chamber and we're ready to do a little bit of irrigation. I do notice though, uh, before we start shaping or getting our working length, there are a few other little tiny stones that are a little bit smaller. Um, and you know, it's 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 hard to, to know uh, about the, the the exact definition really of uh, of what a pulp stone is. Um, when I say the exact definition, it's hard to know if this is a pulp stone or not. But nevertheless, these are little tiny fragments that can block the canal orifice. So the the, the worst thing for you to do is to uh, leave these in place um, as you're shaping because you can shape the tooth and then, um, you know, if you open up the canal space and one of those little tiny uh, balls drops down the, uh, the, the canal, um, you're in trouble, okay, because it's going to block the canal. So the first instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt uh, the working length uh, in the distal. I feel like the distal canal is quite wide. We hook up our apex locator and I have a little kind of fiddling around with uh, my size 10 K file, but it isn't quite reaching the end. Okay, I've got to be also careful that the, this is a metal ceramic crown, so I don't want to short circuit the, the file. Um, but what we notice is the furthest point we've reached in the distal is, is 22 millimeters. So if you're a regular view, uh, view of my channel, you know that if we can't get to the end, it's usually the file being gripped further up its shank rather than the tip that's not getting to length. So I am just going to open up the distal uh, uh, canal with a higher diameter uh, rotary file. So we first we start with a size uh, 15, a bit of irrigation, and then I'm using a size 25 um, uh, high flex uh, rotary file here. And what I don't do is I don't go straight for the working length again. I'm going to leave this to soak in sodium hypochlorite and I am going to move over to uh, to try and find the working length in the mesolingual. So in this case, I know that the distal is uh, quite calcified and I can't get down it. So I'm going to swap um, my size 10k file for a size 8d finder because if the uh, distal is is narrow then the mesolingual is definitely going to be narrow and as we sort of have a fiddle around with the mesolingual here again I notice the significant resistance so I'm not quite reaching the end and again um, you know I hook up my apex locator I can feel a slight stop with this hand file and um, 
and also as well when I hook up the apex locator I'm getting this kind of short circuiting uh, from the crown there are obviously uh, things we can do to stop the, stop the short circuiting but in my case I just feel like it's more quick and efficient just to just to, to avoid the uh, the file touching the sides of the crown and um, you know we the furthest point we've reached with this is is uh, is, is about 20 so uh, again it's the same protocol with the distal we are going to shape the mesolingual with our higher diameter files and then we're going to leave that to soak um, in, in the sodium hypochlorite so we've attempted two canals and both of them we haven't got to zero don't panic you know don't push these files I'm now going to try and reach zero down with my uh, uh, down, down the MB same protocol as before we're going to get a size 8D finder I feel like this is actually negotiating quite nicely uh, to length we hope they hook up the UK picks locator it's not reaching zero but it is close so um, again same protocol as the other two uh, canals I'm just gonna um, see, see how far I've got in this case it's about 22 maybe 21.5 uh, millimeters and then I am again doing the same thing getting the size 15 uh, glide path files um, getting a size 25 uh, high flex rotary files and this is just going to open up uh, this canal space so once we've opened up the mesial buckle I'm going to move back over to the mesial lingual and um, uh, what I do in this case is I forget to press the record button which is uh, which is quite annoying but um, what we'll notice here is I have still have the recording of uh, the, uh, the, the the apex locator and it shows that the mesial lingual we get uh, we get to zero so great we've we've opened up the mesolingual we've left the mesobuckle and the, and and the distal to soak in sodium hypochlorite and now we're ready to shape our mesolingual with the glide path file and of course when we shape with our glide path file we always place this to zero again it's another question i get all the time from um, people who watch the channel and of course because we know the mesolingual was difficult to get to length uh, rather than going from a 15 to a tw uh, 25 I'm going to use an intermediary file I'm going to use a size 20 high flex file just so the the jump between uh, 15 and 25 isn't too much because the tooth uh, the canal is quite sclerosed if you can try and push these high diameter files uh, down these narrow canals you can cause a ledge okay or even a file fracture and before I uh, uh, start to uh, do anything more, I notice there's a very, very, very small uh, pulp stone. Again, this is quite dangerous in this case because, um, of course, I've opened up all three of the canals and this pulp stone uh, will very, very easily uh, drop down into the canals. And, and, and I think if you were to drop a, a pulp stone of this size into a canal, it would be very very difficult to remove of course um, there's a possibility that you could negotiate past this and when you use your rotary files that you it likely just shape this uh, this 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 pulp stone that drop down out but it's just best to safe to be better to be safe than sorry isn't it of course and remember always always irrigate and then I'm going to um, attempt to go down the distal again. So we've shaped the, the mesolingual when we know we're to length on that. I'm going to make a very, very small bend at the end with my uh, size 8 uh, D finder. And then, um, uh, 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 of course, the stopper we know is a triangle. So I'm going to make a little snip on one of the one of the little apexes of the triangle so we know the orientation of uh, of the bend and I have another little feel around with this and I'm what I'm trying to look feel for is this kind of catch that's going to push the past uh, the stop but again you know we hook up the, the the size 8d finder to the apex locator and it is all over the place again I think it's because it's short circuiting on the on the crown um, and then um, again, I'm, I'm 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 clutching at straws here, but I'm genuinely not uh, getting to length at all. And again, the furthest point we reached is still 22 uh, millimeters with this distal. Um, so again, same protocol as before. Just going to shape um, it with higher diameter files. The temptation to just push these files and um, just be impatient with this sort of thing is is really really uh, easy. Um, and what you want to do is even if you're making very, very small incremental um, uh, improvements to reaching the apex, say, you know, the furthest point you reached last time was 21.5 millimeters. Now it's 22. You just want to trust the process. So just use these uh, rotary files uh, methodically and try not to get impatient about it. Um, but, you know, once we have, uh, again, uh, 
shaped up the distal for its furthest point reach. I'm going to leave that to soak again. And then now I'm ready to try and negotiate down the mesial buccal canal, which again um, involves me making a very, very small bend at the end with these little tiny hand files and then having a little uh, having a little negotiation. And again, it's the same sort of thing. You know, you just pop the, the file in. I'm not ramming it home. I'm just having a little feel around. And, and I feel like... I'm, I'm not quite getting uh, to length, but it's getting even better than I did last time. And also, I feel there is resistance in this file, but it is reaching to length. I feel like it's going to go. And in this case, I noticed that the stop is kind of getting in the way um, of, of, of me negotiating down. Now, I could get a, a, a larger hand file, um, but in this case, I've just removed the stop because when you're using a larger, longer hand file, it's got a bit more flex on it. And I know these are, these are tight canals. And as we sort of remove the, the stopper, the size eight just drops down um, into, into length. And we hook up to the apex locator. And we know now that the mesobuckle is at zero and the, and the working length of the mesobuckle is, is 24. Um, not ideal. You'd like a little bit of shank left on the file. But, um, you know, I suppose in a way you've just got to um, try your best. Once we found the mesial buckle, I'm going to go um, in with the, with the distal. And then um, we have a little fiddle around, have a little play around. And then for whatever reason, because I've opened it up, I've let it soak. We've now got the zero reading in the distal, which is, uh, which is uh, 24 uh, uh, millimeters. So great. We've got to zero on all of the canals. I'm pretty confident there's only three canals in this uh, in this um, in this tooth, and then we're just going to finish off the shaping in all of the all of the canals. So, um, you know, just like I say, just be methodical about this. Try not to push these files any further than you have to, mainly because of ledging. That's that's what you've got to be worried about. And then we're ready for our uh, our comfort radiograph. And um, what I do notice is that when we look at the distal cone in this case. Um, I'm slightly worried that this is a little bit shorter uh, than the than the radiographic apex, and this could be the the point at which the uh, the, the 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 portal of exit, the apex on this distal route uh, is. But if it looks a little bit short, the best thing for you to do is just to pick up your apex locator and just just do another check. And when we um, you know we place the the hand filing in 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 place. Um, you know, I confirmed that the working length that we've placed the cone at is is the correct working length. Granted, in this case, I use a size eight uh, uh, definder, and people will probably argue about that. But um, I feel like um, in this case, I've confirmed that the working length in the distal is indeed uh, correct. And then. Um, all it leaves us to do then is just to do our final irrigation protocol. It's to do our uh, paper points, and then it is to just to do our uh, final obturation. Of course, I'm using uh, a bias ceramic, um, and then I'm using these smaller diameter um, GP cones because the uh, the access cavity is quite small, and um, you know I'm using high flex. The matched cones are quite thick as they reach uh, the, the the end, so there won't be enough uh, space for us to place all of the cones in place. And when we look at the x-ray, it looks absolutely beautiful. We've got that kind of nice conservative access with this with this tooth. We've got a nice kind of fluted shape of the obturation. And overall, again, as always, it looks fantastic. So thanks for watching. Um, again, I'll say this once a thousand times. If you have any criticisms at all, if you are, um, you know, if you feel like something's been done and you disagree, please, please comment in the section below. It's all about learning this channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you want to join the membership program on YouTube, um, you know, it's got some fantastic exclusive content. And I will see you next week in the next video. Bye-bye.